Let us all delight in the Lord and his law. Let us all delight in the Lord we adore. Let us all delight in the Lord of life. Let us all delight in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Servant Podcast. My name is Josh Alley, and this podcast is dedicated to to searching the scriptures in order that we can live a more Christ-like lifestyle ourselves. We want to bring glory to God. We want to honor others with our words and our actions and our deeds. And we are here to try to look at the Bible and notice some things that we can take, we can apply, we can uh, meditate upon that will help us become more intentional as a Christian and more pleasing as a servant of God. If you haven't joined us in the previous weeks, if this is your first time coming to the podcast, I appreciate that you're here. Um, This year, we've been talking about intentionality as a Christian. We started an episode there. It released on January 31st, talking about living a more intentional life. How can we as Christians be more intentional in our lifestyle? So certain disciplines that we need to be mindful of as we live the Christian life. How can we hone them in and be more intentional with them? The whole month of February, we looked at uh, intentional Bible study. How can we be more intentional when it comes to reading God's Word, listening to what God's trying to tell us through His pages, and also how we can um, grow toward teaching other people how to live according to God's Word. So the whole month of February, we looked at intentional Bible study. Last week, we started with a new section of, or a new topical, uh, a new topic for the month, and that being intentional listening. How can we be an intentional listener? And we, we covered the topic of the preference to speak. Sometimes we have a preference to speak, and that severely hinders our learning. And we we discussed learning is directly determined by our listening. Going with that, I guess following suit with being a better listener, a, a better communicator, having more fruitful conversation as a Christian, something I think is applicable to all of us. If especially if we're in any kind of conversation with those that we love, those that we don't know, we're they're strangers, or those that you know we think we know very well. And that and so the the title of this episode is the awkwardness of conversation. And I I would dare to say that all of us have been in scenarios and situations where we just you know, it's it maybe the conversation's gotten to a stopping point and it you know, both parties of the conversation know they think, "Man, this is awkward. What are we supposed to do now?" So that's something we've all been a part of, and we all know that that awkward silence of conversation, or that just the awkward conversation in general. We we have to remember some things. We need to be humble in those circumstances. We need to uh, consider the other person. Consider where are we going to go in this conversation. What do we just break off? Do we just quit talking? Okay, have a good day. See you later. Next time we have an awkward conversation, we'll do the same. Or what are we going to do to try to invoke evoke um, maybe a more fruitful conversation? So when it comes to awkward conversation, we need to remember a few things. First thing I think we need to remember is that every person you and you and I included. Every person is an expert about themselves. You all don't know me unless I tell you who I am, and I know who I am because I'm me. <laughs> I mean that that's that's simple but profound. I'm an expert on myself. I know me better than anyone. So we need to remember that when we're in a conversation with someone, instead of you know assuming that we know what someone's going through or we know their position, or we know their beliefs, we know what they what they do any other time, you know, we need to remember to try to alleviate any kind of negative bias that we put on them. We need to remember 
let them speak. Let them tell me who they are because they are an expert on themselves. In helping professions, uh, or even really as a Christian, as a minister, because all Christians are ministers, they're supposed to minister to the needs of others. They're supposed to uh, bear one another's burdens. Helping professions and those in minister roles or a Christian, maybe we have a, a tendency of having what's called a fixing reflex. A fixing reflex. And what that is, is, oh man, they, they fall short in this area. It's obvious. We need to try to, we need to address this. We need to fix this, and we. I'm going to tell them how they can have this solution. I'm going to just tell them what they need to do to have a better life, and and it will fix their problems. And th- this isn't even allowing the person to tell, hey, I have a problem. Hey, I'm trying to work through something. So that's something we have to, in conversation. That's an awkward conversation when we have this bias of, oh, they mentioned this and this. We need to fix that before I can... Uh, go further in a relationship with them. We need to be careful. So what are the best ways to build trust with a stranger? Think for a moment. What are the best ways to build, build trust with a stranger? Or maybe even maintain trust with someone that you've already been acquainted with or you're close with. How can you maintain trust or build trust? There's three things I've got. Mutual willingness. If we're having a conversation and this person is courteous and polite and wants to talk, there needs to be a mutual willingness. It can't be imbalanced. It can't be, you know, what our topic of is the month. It can't be all listening on one side, no talking, and it can't be all talking on one side, no listening. There needs to be a balance, a mutual willingness for both parties in a conversation to uh, talk, tell them about themselves, you know, share what they believe or or their hobbies or their family or some personal information. But then there also needs to be that willingness. Oh, wow. You said this. I'm listening to you. I'm, I'm present with you right now. So a mutual willingness is how we can build trust with strangers and maintain trust with those we already are close with. And then the second thing is investing interest. Give people, it's like depositing money in a bank. You need to just deposit yourself for a moment. Slow down. Don't think about where you're going to lunch. Let's say it's, you know, 12 o'clock on a Sunday. Services just let out. There's a visitor, but you're starving. Here's, Here's some dangerous things we could do. We could just go up to the visitor out of duty, out of a sense of duty. I have to greet you know, I have to greet the visitor. Didn't didn't Jesus say uh, in Matthew five at the end of the chapter that even just the tax collectors and the Pharisees they greeted the ones that they they appreciated. They only greeted their brothers. How how am I supposed to be different? Well, I need to greet the stranger. So I must before I head out the door to go to eat. I need to just go make my presence known and say, hey, I'm here. I hope you enjoyed the service. Good to have you. Hope to see you again. Peace. Instead, let's slow down. Let's deposit ourselves right there. Like we would money in a bank, and we would expect our money in the bank to gain interest. Let's put ourselves right there, present in that situation with that visitor or person, and invest. Listen to them. Gain, gain interest in their life. Put yourself in their life and just uh, show them that you have that courtesy for them and that you uh, are willing to build a relationship. We need to be good relationship builders. So, and then the third thing, building trust with a stranger, we need to realize the humanity of us all. And this this is like a Matthew 7 type thing of we all have specks in our eyes uh, especially the first time meeting someone, I should never just say, I can't believe they look like that, or I can't believe they'd wear that. I can't believe, you know, you don't even know the person. We've got to be careful not to, to cast hard judgment, especially on the first time meeting them. And we're going to talk about this idea of, you know, the statement, first impression is everything. Uh, we're going to think about that here in just a moment. 
So engaging with strangers, just the engagement process itself can be awkward. Not even having an awkward conversation, but the engaging with them. Oh, you notice that there is a visitor. I, th- I, I think it is rude. It is very rude if we just notice that and don't do anything about it. If we just notice, hey, there's someone in our assembly or there's someone new in the workplace or I have a new neighbor and we just notice it and that's it. Leave it there. Because, because yes, engaging with strangers can be awkward because we have all these thoughts. What will they think about me? What if, what if I say something stupid? What if I say something offensive? What if I give them a wrong impression of myself? Let's let's reel that back a little bit because we're putting a lot on them. We're putting a lot of assumptions or whatever you want to call it. We're putting a lot of things on a stranger that we don't even know. That they uh, mainly in the in the form of judgment. You know what are they going to judge me about? What if I say something dumb? Are they going to judge me? If I say something offensive, are they going to judge me? Let's turn that back on ourselves. What do I think about them? What do I think about them? Do I have pure intentions, pure thoughts about them before I engage with this stranger? What if what if they say something dumb? What what is my reaction, my response going to be, you know? And what if they say something offensive? How am I going to react? How am I going to respond to this person? What if what if they give a a wrong impression off or a bad impression of themselves? There always needs to be, especially when it's a stranger and this is the first time I've ever met them, there needs to be grace. There needs to be an understanding and mercy and thinking about, you know, yes, this I don't know this person. And that takes us to that idea of first impressions are everything. First impressions matter very much. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be our authentic self. We need to be real people, and we need to consider that who I present myself to be matters. But I th- I don't think we should decide that a, a person is a certain way based on one, at one interaction with them. For example, you know, what if I meet a stranger and what if I'm, you know, what if I take offense to someone using bad language and I meet this stranger and they say one word that, you know, really offends me. What am I going to go, what am I going to do with that? Am I going to just say, well, they got a potty mouth and they have no respect for me? I need to slow down and think about context of situations. I need to think about in this situation, their impression, my impression of them was great. And then I need to take it at a situational balance here and not just decide a person is the way he is or she is the first time I meet them. It, it does danger to relationship building. So we're talking about how we can engage with strangers because sometimes it can be awkward. And um, so think about this. The awkwardness of conversation, it could cause us to be self-centered. I think about this. Um, once you hit that roadblock, you know, you're at those icebreaker questions. Uh, have you... Been in the area long? Oh, what you, what brought you to the congregation, or you know what brought you to this job at this particular place? Do you have a family? Once you've gotten through all these icebreaker questions, we got to be careful because that silence, that awkward silence, could cause us to be self centered because we know a lot about ourselves and we don't know how to ask good open ended questions. So we need to be a good questioner not a good self-projector. Listening can help you build on the information you've gathered, which can lead to further questions. So that silence, you've asked those questions. Hey, you know, what brings you to this part of town? What what are you doing here? And they, for example, they say, well, my job brings me over here. Oh, wow, where do you work? You know, what do you, what kind of job do you do? Have you done that long? Um, uh, are you married? Do you have did you have to move your kids and everything over? We have to gather information. And the information we've gathered from conversation can help us build into knowing who that person is a little bit more. And to to be quite honest, the more people talk to you, you know a lot more about them than they do you. 
So it's better to be quiet sometimes and listen. And that's what our focus of this month is, is intentional listening. There's a value of showing people who we are and not just telling them who you want them to think you are. I'll say that again. I think that's highly important. The value of showing someone who you are and not just telling them who you want them to think you are. Because we can, first, the first time ever meeting someone, we can be whoever we want to be in front of them. But I think we just need to do our best to be the same person across the board and allowing them to see who we are. Going along with this idea, think about um, showing people who you are. Uh, it goes further than telling. Uh, I'm reminded of a proverb in Proverbs 27, verse 2. It says, let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. So with this idea of flattery, almost, this goes all the way back to this awkward silence in conversation. We're, we've hit a point of awkward silence. We're not sure what questions to ask. We're not sure what we're interested in. We are not sure if we really want to be interested in this person. And we've hit this we've hit this roadblock of awkward silence. Well, it's time for me to talk about myself. Let me tell you everything I've every good thing I've done, every uh, award I've won. Let's just be I'm being serious about this. It's kind of funny though. Let me just tell you all the great things I've done. Let me praise my own life. So so this is who I am. This is who I want you to think I am. That's that's dangerous and that's very toxic. We need to show people who we are and not tell them. We need to allow other people's, like in the proverb, let another praise you and not your own mouth. Spend some time, say this stranger, first time you're meeting them, spend some time with them. Just just get to know them on a on a personal level and then they'll start to see who you are by your actions by your good works by your the way you speak by the way you listen by the, by all these great things they'll know who you are before too long so when we hit awkward patterns or patches of silence we don't have to then just be like oh let me tell you turn it on myself maybe that is the moment to just stop the conversation. We have to be good feelers of conversation too. We need to know, okay, this person does have time. This person might be confined by time. I shouldn't hold them here for too long. We have to be good readers of conversation as well. So maybe when that awkward silence stops, then say, okay, hey, it was great talking to you. I hope you have a wonderful day and if you need anything, you know, just reach out. I'll be there. Or that's just an example. But sometimes it is better to just break off the conversation. So we need to be more intentional disciples of Jesus. And how we do that is, I think I referenced it last week. Uh, let me turn over here. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. In verse 3 and 4. Well, verse 5 says, Have this mind which is in you. Or have this mind in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 3 and 4 of Philippians 2 says, Don't do anything from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard other one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. So we need to think about other people. And we need to be considerate. And we need to listen. We don't need to make the show about us. We need to try to, we need to think, what are we trying to really accomplish here? With This is a stranger. What is my goal here? Is my goal just to convert them and go on and never have any discussion with them ever again? <laughs> that's, uh, that's probably an ungodly way to look at it. Because do they need the gospel? Maybe if they are not already saved, yes. 
But we at that point, we're just looking at them as a project. And once we start looking at people as a project, we forget that we are projects ourselves. And we think we've probably achieved the greatest state of existence that we can achieve. And we need to remember that we have growth. So why are we engaging with strangers? Why why do we want to, you know, because engaging can be awkward. Why is it worth it? Yeah, Hebrews 13.2. Hebrews 13.2. This is something that really, we can lose the significance of this passage because of our imagination or our uh, how it intrigues us and stimulates our intellectual side of humans. Hebrews 13.2 says this, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. Oh, wow, that sounds pretty good. Here's the second part of the verse. For by this, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Oh, man, angels. Okay, let me get hyper-focused on this. It said angels, and that's something that really interests me because... That's the unknown. I don't know how it works, but I'm interested. We can get more interested on that verse. Oh, entertaining angels without knowing it. We can get more focus on that side of it and neglect the very thing it's telling us not to neglect, and that's showing hospitality to strangers. How about we do the things we know to do? If we don't know anything about angels and entertaining angels, how about we do the side of things of entertaining or uh, showing hospitality to strangers and engaging with strangers, trying to get to know them, build a relationship with them, eventually, yes, share the gospel with them. And then you've gained a brother or gained a sister. But we need to be personable people, ready to engage through the awkwardness. When the awkwardness happens, deal with it. Everybody has to deal with it. There's not a clear-cut method of how to deal with it. Do your best to ask open-ended questions is what I would do, or just end the conversation. There's nothing wrong with it necessarily. Just remember, going back to Matthew 5, and we'll end on this, a few words about this. Matthew 5, it says there at the end of the chapter, um, if you greet only your brothers... What more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Let's meditate on that this week. If we're only greeting our the people we know, because that's our comfort zone, because that's where we feel safest, then we are not fulfilling what Christ wants us to fulfill. Let's be considerate toward others. Let's live for Christ, die to ourselves, Die to our awkwardness sometimes, and we have to die to our preference. We need to think about others and think about what God wants from us. If you need anything this week, if you have any prayer requests or any concerns, reach out. I'd be glad to speak with you or or bear a burden for you and with you. I hope you have a great week. God bless you.